you good hi everybody happy happy wednesday um we've gone onto my old phone now so hopefully this wouldn't won't time out and freeze and all because we still haven't worked out what's going on with the other one so uh hopefully you're all okay uh it's a little bit colder today i should have put a cardi on or uh, something thicker i was far too excited for spring definitely oh there we go there's josh's phone going off <laughs> that's just saying we're live that's just saying we're live <laughs> Um, we're going to do a block today, um, but I've got some bits to show you first that have just come into the shop actually. As you can see, they're still in the cellophane, so I thought I'd bring them straight over and show you. These are two new colours from the Moda Grunge range. Um, this is the, it's called Peacoat, which um, is that really beautiful sort of like deep navy. Um, but this is the metallic one, so you can see it's got the, that lovely gold sort of grunge distressed look to it but you've got like different colours of navy and all in there, sort of a lovely sort of like French navy and then a deep midnight blue. And then this one is, again, Peacoat, but it's the glitter. And this is called, uh, it's just called Moda, Moda Grunge Glitter. And if I take this off, um, it's got a silver glitter running through it. And you can see, you can really rub it and the glitter doesn't come off on your hand at all. It really, really does stay put. And it's got that lovely, it's like a midnight sky type look to it. So um, I just thought I'd show you those. They've come through today. Um, they are already, I've put them on the website, so hopefully they should be active. <laughs> hopefully I've done it right. But um, I just thought they were really beautiful. I love that glitter one. It's got like a real, I don't know if you can, it's showing on camera, but it's got a real shimmer to it. But I love the fact that the glitter is like, it just doesn't come off, which you get a lot with glitter fabrics. So you end up, you know, end up wearing it all. But um, it's fab, really, really lovely. I like that bit with the gold as well. It looks very opulent, the navy and the gold. I like it. I like it. I like it. Let me just put that in the bin. Um, so who's coming online? Who's saying hello today? I get these Susan out. Susan Ann, there's Jean. Hi Susie. Hi Jean. There's Sheila, Andy. There's Sheila. Claire, Hi Andy. Heather. Hi Heather. Lovely, lovely. Hi. Um, the clearance fabrics are all still at £5 a metre. Um, you've all been shopping well, so quite a lot of it has gone, but there's still quite a lot there as well. So um, I'm going to take those off when I get back over to the shop. They're going to revert back to normal clearance prices. So if there is anything you want there and you want to take advantage of that, that £5 a metre, get on there quick. OK, you've probably got till about three o'clock by the time I manage to get back onto my laptop and, and revert them all back to uh, normal prices so um so yeah do check out the website if there's anything you want there's quite a lot there that like you've got three and four meters left so if you're looking for a cheap way to back a quilt or you need some bigger projects maybe for a dress or something like that definitely worth looking at so um we're going to do a block obviously it's wednesday and i'm playing around with this one so it's a really traditional block it's a shoe fly block um but i thought let's play with some curves okay so rather than a traditionally a shoe fly block this is a half square triangle and frankly i've had enough of half square triangles for a little while this would normally be here would be half squares and that would be a traditional shoe fly so i thought what would happen if we put it curves in here so we're going to do like a drunkard's path little block like that and i think it works quite well i think it looks kind of oriental a little bit japanesey like do you know what i mean like that um, the top of like those little Japanese houses like and stuff. Pardon? Like a Japanese lantern. Like a, or a Japanese lantern, yeah. Yeah. Almost, I don't know, it look, almost looks like it could be like a temple, like a Japanese temple or something. I don't know. But I just thought we'd have a play around with some curves because we haven't done curves for a little while. Um, so I thought we could alter this block. So what you're going to need is, now I'm going to do this in a different colours because again, I'm using up scraps from my bucket so that I can, uh, you know, I'm not cutting into new fabrics all the time. You're going to need... Before we start that, yeah. Claire just asks, are the fabrics suitable for dressmaking? The ones on the... On the clearance, clearance. yeah. They're, well, they're all 100% cotton. So anything you would use... I mean, I've made dresses and stuff out of them, if you want to come up to me a minute. Um, mm -hmm. I've um, I've made dresses out of the, the quilt and wick cottons. Um, I've done... Um, I really like the Sew Me Something patterns because um, they're designed for girls with, you know, bigger boobs and hips. Um, and the Kate dress I've made three or four times at a quilting cotton and I've made the Helena dress as well um so yeah anything that anything that says cotton on it absolutely you can make you can make tops my mum made a top recently out of um out of some fabric we had in the shop Linda's made tops and stuff so 
um, we made Sarah and I made skirts as well. We made them um, Viola skirts, which again is a sew me something pattern. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, absolutely cool. Um, right, okay. So what you're going to need for this, you are going to need um, a two and a half inch square for your centre, which is going to be right there in the centre. Okay, and then from a fabric to go round it, you're going to need another two and a half inch squares. Okay. And then you want two pieces, two rectangles, which are two and a half by six and a half. Okay, so that's going to make your centre bit. Now, again, you can decide on what colours you do. You could do these in, you know, all sorts of random colours. Okay. And then from your background fabric, you're going to need four two and a half by six and a half. Yeah, six and a half. My brain went then for a second. Four two and a half by six and a half. And also from your background fabric, you're going to need four, four and a half inch squares. OK. And then from the fabric that I'm going to call my frame fabric. OK. I want four, six and a half by one and a half. And then, oh, excuse me, four, four and a half inch squares again. OK. So that's everything you need for one block. Right. I will put it on Facebook if you want those um, instructions again. I'll, um, I'll put a little cutting instructions down for you. We're going to start really, really simply and we're going to make the centre of the block. We're going to do this bit here. OK, so for that, I need these pieces. Now, I fussy cut this little two and a half inch square so that I got that little, little mandala thing right in the centre. OK, if you um, actually do you want me to just go through fussy cutting just in case. You haven't done that before i'm sure most of you have but how i fussy cut um is so i use this little bit of scrap here that i've got left over i know i want it to be two and a half by two and a half so half of that is one and a quarter half of two and a half is one and a quarter so on my ruler i would find where my one and a quarter is and where my one and a quarter is here and find where it meets so i know that i'm looking at that little point there okay I then want that, so if I was, say, cutting out this one, to go right in the centre. So find that one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and get it right in the centre of the of the design, OK? I'm then going to look up the line on the ruler, like that, the one and a quarter line. And, like, on this design, I'm very lucky that, actually, there's sort of points there and there which run right through the centre. So I'm going to make sure that it's... Not only is that one and a quarter, one and a quarter spot there, but the one and a quarter and one and a quarter are running right through there. OK, and then again, I would look that way and just think, right, OK, it just needs to go over a weeny bit like that. OK, I would then cut up that side and across the top like that. Turn this and then I could do my two and a half by two and a half. And that way, that mandala should be sat right in the centre, OK, like that. And you've got the same amount all the way round. And you can do that with any sort of fabric that you're looking to fussy cut, if you want to fussy cut something for the centre, OK? So I'm just going to go with my scrap bucket for crumb quilting. Anyway, back to these colourways. So there's my little centre. And I'm going to stitch on the two and a half inch squares either side like that okay i'm actually going to do that so that those are both going inwards i think should I do that oh, what should we do yeah let's do that let's do that so i'm just playing around this is quite a busy fabric actually i'm like i said i'm just using scraps you can play around with them so we're going to stitch these on with quarter of an inch so i'm going to go over to the machine and talk to me ladies have a, have a little chat who's there what are you all up to uh, Heather asked which dress making pattern did you recommend? Uh, has, um, has I really her. like um, a company called Sew Me Something uh, owned by Jules Fallon. They're not cheap patterns but they are absolutely designed for slightly bigger ladies. Um, I mean they, they start at like a size 8 but they go up to like a size 28 um, and she does these really lovely, I've got a really nice little dress that I made, a Kate dress um, and it's just that she designs for bigger bigger boobs and hips <laughs> which is really nice <laughs> um and uh, they do come up quite big look at the finished sizes on the garments rather than your dress size um because you know even when i was like an 18 
I would probably have cut a 16 or a 14 because they do come out quite quite big. Um, Susie, I'm, I'm, you were there, I saw you, I heard your name come up. I know you've done the Helen address a couple of times, haven't you? I know you've used them and liked, uh, liked her patterns. So, so yeah, the, um, the cake dress is a really nice one to start with. No? Oh, don't you do this to me again. This is how you got all tangled up. Why are you doing this? Just be really careful. Why did you come and thread it? That's how it, she had to go to the doctors the other day. was because the thread pinged back up and uh, got all tangled up in there and I couldn't get it out. So let's just re-thread her. Like that. Try that again. So quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew those two either side of that centre one. Right, be nice, behave, no messing. There we go. <laughs> uh, Aline says she watched the crochet, uh, crochet daisy this morning. Ah, lovely. Uh, yeah, and Susan says... Oh, I didn't put a link up for it. I completely forgot. I will put the link up, I promise, later. Um, as soon as I get back to the shop, I'll put the pattern link up. Sorry, someone should have shouted at me, reminded, up, reminded me. Totally forgot to do it yesterday. And Susan Ancestry does the sew me patterns. Yeah, this yeah, sew me something. If you Google that, um this she also does um she does lives like we do um as well on her Facebook page. And um you know she'll go through certain elements of the pattern. So I'm just going to press these outwards, okay? So towards the, the outer fabric, the darker fabric. Um, and she does like little, you know, if you, there's a slightly trickier element, she'll do a little demo and stuff. And there's like YouTube videos that you can go back and watch about the patterns too. Okay. I'm now going to add those two and a half by six and a halves either side, just to make really nice and simple little centerpiece. Okay. So if you're making lots of these blocks, if you're going to do a quilt in it, you could, you know, you could chain piece all of this. Uh, Marion says she's made children's dresses and skirts from her stash. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can do all sorts of uh, things with cotton. And anything that a pattern says is suitable for cotton, you can use use quilting weight. So, uh, and says Sirdar Cal starts today. Too. He does. The Sirdar uh, crochet along. Cal ah. does crochet along. <laughs> um, yes, it does. Yes, hopefully you've all had your wool. They it did all, all go out on Monday. So hopefully you've all had your packs. And I'm going to sew this one to the other side. Like that. And what I'm doing is I'm flipping it so that I haven't got those seams going up through the feed dogs. And I've got the, the flat fabric. just helps everything stay nice and flat. Um, and you know, the, the, the seams won't like crumple up and stuff. Uh, Jenny says she's been waiting patient all morning. Oh, for your pack. I'm sure it'll be there soon, lovely. They did all go out. So uh, hopefully the postman will be there soon. Okay, and then again, I'm going to iron that one out like that. Okay, so really, really nice and simple, really quick. You've made the center. I would just square this up and just make sure that it's six and a half by six and a half, which it actually is. I don't need to chop any off. That's actually worked for a change. So there we go. My math was um, right. For the pattern, not for the crochet. Um. Ah, right. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, cool. Okay, so that's my centre made. I'm now going to make these little pieces here. Okay, so these little triangular pieces here, and then we're going to work on the curves. Okay, nice and simple. Literally just straight lines sew in. So I'm going to take one of my background two and a half by six and a halves, and one of my little frame colours, which was one and a half by six and a half. And we're going to put these right sides together, like that. And stitch them down and you're going to make four of those okay so i'm going to do that with all four and you know these are all really really simple little elements um and actually it's no it's done it again why have you come and threaded oh no you haven't there we go um nice and you know these bits are really simple we're gonna tackle the curves at the end <laughs> Uh, Jean says her clearance fabric she ordered yesterday arrived this morning. Ah, brilliant. Oh, that was good postage. I don't know, the postage is really bizarre. Sometimes it's brilliant. You know, about 90% of our orders get through if you do first class. The next day, other orders, 
it can take like 10, 11, 12 days. And you're like, they got posted on the same day. What's going on? <laughs> I think it just depends on which sorting office sometimes it has to go through. Uh, yeah. Sheila says her pack, to, pack, pack arrived today. Ah, oh, brilliant. Oh, some of you are getting them, so that's fabulous. Sorry, Anne, could you just clarify what you mean by that? Anne just says, have you got it now? If you can just clarify what it is. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Did not want to press because it was a bit wrinkled and then we're just going to make four of these little rectangular units which are nice and simple to do oh i see she was she was talking to jenny that makes, that makes ah, more sense right <laughs> did you get all confused with the comments lab well yeah i was i thought it was a i thought it was a question for you and I was uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay and I'm going to iron these towards the bigger piece of fabric. So I'm going to iron, because again, it's just easy. You've got less bulk then. So I'm going to iron them. Even though this is darker, I'm actually going to iron it towards the uh, the bigger piece. Just give that a little finger press to start with, just to help it. And then press it. Okay, that's one. And then we're going to do the others. Oh, wrong way round. Finger press. And I know we normally go to the dark side, but when... Um, when you've got a little skinny piece, I oh, need to trim that one up. You've got a little skinny piece. Sometimes it's better to have this. I find it's better to have the seam go in, go into the l larger amount of fabric. It's all right. Everyone is just, it's just me being clever that time. <laughs> Everyone's saying sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, just it's just Josh being, Josh being daft left. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't confuse him. He's easily confused that one. Don't confuse him too much. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go back here and you want these now to measure three and a half by six and a half. So I'm just going to make sure that they do. So I'm going to line my ruler up along there and you can see that one just needs, I was obviously a little bit lax with my cutting. I'm just going to cut that little bit off there. And just make sure that these are three, uh, three and a half by six and a half these need to be. There we go. I'll say I was in a funny five minutes when I was cutting the uh, red because they're all just a weeny bit bit out. There we go, that one. And then make sure that one's right as well. There we go. So as quick as that, we've already got two sort of units done. Okay. Like that. Let's get that pin out of the way. Pop that in the bin. So I've got those nice rectangular units okay so I've done my center and those ones pop those aside now we're going to work on the curves okay and there is a little bit of sort of like working out on these so that's why I wanted to do this last so we can spend the most time on it I've used um, a drunkard's path template that was part of this pattern okay which is the sunflower block it just happened to be the exact right this is a pattern I had um, the template is on a website. I've, I've sorted the template out, so it is on a website. Um, it's um, it's the right size. We want a three. We want it to end up as three and a half inches. There are lots and lots of um, templates and patterns out there, but you just want to make sure that your template is the right size for your block. This one just ha I happen to have it, so I didn't have to do any maths or work it out. I've cut out the template came like that on the on the pattern. I've cut them out on the lines and then I'm going to draw them and I'm, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to cut these out all four at once. OK, so I want like the, the bigger piece, the convex. Oh, yeah, she says oh, the convex piece. See, it's a good job it's written on there because I'd have got that the wrong way round. Like that on my four and a half inch squares. And I'm just going to use a, a marking pen, a Frixon pen just to draw around the edge so I've trimmed up those edges I know they're already nice and straight so I can line the template up and then I can just draw around this curve okay like that okay so I've just transferred that shape over if you're going to make lots of them use some template plastic and draw these out onto template plastic or treat yourself to some some template you know acrylic templates you can buy them you know out, like the um, ruler stuff. I imagine that Andy from Craft UK has got some. Uh, if you ask him for drunkard paths templates, I'm sure he does them. Okay, so I'm just going to pin those all together and then I'm going to cut out that line and I'm going to do it with scissors because I find this bit easier. 
and I'm just going to cut out on that line with my scissors. Okay, like that. Now, a lot of people get very scared of curves, but I'm hopefully going to show you a way of doing it where you don't have to use lots and lots of pins. Um, we have done this method before in previous tutorials, but I'm going to show you how to do it with, with like no pins and it's all about how you place your hands and it, and it works. Okay, so there's my convex piece and then I'm going to use this one to cut out my other pieces. So I want to line that up on those two edges like that and draw around the template. Okay, so down there and along there. Everybody's still with me so far. You're all, all with me. Are you all running scared from curves? Um, Claire says it's a Facebook group uh, for the cowl too, where links were shared early. Oh, lovely. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, so if you are do it, doing it, join the Facebook group and then you'll be able to see everyone's progress and you know, ask questions and stuff and things. It seems like everyone's getting their emails with patterns for the... Ah, oh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. So we're going to cut round that now, okay? Just like we did the other one. And cut up, oh, up there like that. And then round that curve. Like that. So, all the way up there. And then chop that weenie bit off there. Okay, that's waste, as is that. You're just going to pop that into your scrap bucket and use it for something else. Although, if you're really clever, you can actually use those to make the reverse of these okay so you can use those to to reverse it all right use them in some scrappy project curves okay don't be scared of curves traditionally you would have put lots and lots and lots of pins in and gone very very slowly and gradually fitted this into this okay at the moment it doesn't look like it's going to fit it will do okay i promise so however we're going to do it um with the cross hands method all right which i really like i find works brilliantly um and just works every time so i'm gonna have to try and do this towards me towards me and then turn it around i want to fit this one into this one and we're going to be stitching a quarter of an inch between okay you're going to lie them right sides together like that and then you think that's never going to fit and you want to line it up about What's that about an eighth of an inch down from the the convex one the bulky one okay rather than the skinny one okay and then we're going to take it over to the machine now i know you've seen me do this before but some of you ladies won't have seen it so i'm going to ask josh to come round and film over my shoulder so you can see this funny hand method thing that we do okay so brought it over to the machine okay right sides together and i want it down about that much Okay, I'm going to pop it into the machine with the, the guide of the quarter of an inch here, right on the edge of the fabric. So I'm just going to take like two or three stitches just to anchor it normally. Okay, so there we go. I'm also going to turn the speed down because it does help with this. So just a couple of little stitches just to anchor. Okay, now normally we sew this way. Okay, so you've got your hands this way and you'd feed through. When you're doing that, it's very hard and your hands get in the way of each other and you can't see what you're doing. So you're going to cross your hands. And what I mean by that is that my left hand would normally be dealing with this piece of fabric and my right hand with this. I'm going to do it the other way round. It feels odd. It really does. And I know some of you ladies who have maybe used this method with us in class and all will tell you the first few times you do it, it feels odd. But once you've got it, it's brilliant. OK, so my left hand is going to deal with this top fabric and I tend to use my middle finger to guide this fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my I'm just holding this one steady with my, my right hand and I'm going to do all the work here. OK, I'm going to use my middle finger to brace those fabrics together and I've lined up those. Hang on, where's a pin so I can show you um, it's a pin. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> with me so i've lined up those fabrics here on the edge and they're right against that guard and i'm bracing it in place with my middle finger on my left hand i'm going to take a few stitches okay so take sort of three or four stitches use your finger again realign okay so i'm just lining up the next little bit about what three quarters of an inch or so take another few stitches line up again 
and because this hand I can actually see what I'm doing because it's if I was trying to do it with this hand it would all be getting in the way so by crossing my hands and using that middle finger you can kind of just take a few stitches realign and I can actually see I'm at my hands are out of the way of my line of sight okay and I'm just going to keep stitching all the way down like that just readjusting lining them up holding them in place with that middle finger like that all the way down like that and when I get to the end you can use the stiletto or a pin or you know something chopstick you just want to get to the end like that and I tend to use, rather than trying to get my hands in there I tend to use that just to bring this round if you got it love yeah and then just sew off the end like that okay cut my thread and then we're going to go back over to the ironing board so just go over that side for me hopefully that helped just being able to look over my shoulder like that it looks a bit of a mess at the moment <laughs> okay but don't worry it will naturally it will want to iron out towards the smaller fabric the concave piece of fabric so let it okay and what we're going to do is we're going to just gently finger press that and give it a press okay uh why do you do that adia yeah, so you cutting these out of four or 4.5 inch squares four and a half four four and a half inch squares yeah yeah so um at the moment it does it looks a bit wonky okay but we're going to square it up, all right? And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to take you through the squaring up because it's really important how you square these up. Otherwise, you lose all those lovely points and, and curves. Now, I do have I have to do this towards myself. So, um, actually, Josh, do you want to come over my shoulder again? Sorry, making him go up and down, up and down today. But it's quite important that you, you guys can see, um, see the lines. I want this to be, you can see at the moment, it looks a bit wonky and a bit, okay. I want them to end up at three and a half inches to go into the block. So what I'm going to look for on the ruler, in fact, if I just put that behind it a sec, what I'm looking for on the ruler is where the three and a half line, which is this one here, the quarter of an inch intersects it like that. Can you see that, guys? So there's my three and a half line running down. And, ooh, and that little bit there is where my quarter of an inch line intersects the three and a half. That's the point I'm looking for, just there, okay? I'm going to line that point up on the top of the curve. So, can you see? So that point there was the one I was looking for, where the three and a half and the quarter inch intersect. I've lined that up on the top of the curve. I then want to come down the edge of my ruler and do the same. So my three and a half line actually if i if i over exaggerate it so i can show you how to look for it okay so i've put that one up there so i want my three and a half and where my quarter inch sits can you see it's not touching that red at the moment so i want to move it around until it does so that both of those points and it might be if you're making a lot of these that you put a little like sharpie mark or something on those two points so that you know that those are the ones you're looking for so i've got my three and a half quarter inch intersect there on the curve and my three and a half quarter inch intersect there on the curve okay I can now cut so I'm going to go up that side and across the top like that and then I can turn it and cut exactly three and a half by three and a half so there's my three and a half and your three and a half there now you do get a little bit of waste can you see that you've got a little bit of waste here and here okay but because of how you're putting them together it's so much better to go a little bit big and have enough to cut down because if i'd have used four inch squares here i would be really really cutting it fine once you've once you've squared it up and sometimes because you're dealing with a curve they can go really wonky and you won't get it in so it's definitely worth going up that weeny bit bigger and I know it seems a little bit wasteful but it's so much easier it will make your life so so much easier okay and there you've got a perfect drunkard's curve okay nice and easy no pins so I'm going to do the other three okay and I'll talk you through what I'm doing as I'm doing it so Josh if you just want to go round ask any questions if you need to ladies um if there's any bits you want me to go through again on those 
I'll, I'll do the squaring up again with you just once more okay well i'm going to square up all four but i'll go through it slowly as well um but yeah um shout if you need me to talk you through any of that uh Alyssa, okay. she did try this method when she did a new york beauty class recently all right, yeah it didn't work for her. Did it not, lovely? What uh, did you struggle with? She said nothing did. I decided never to do New York Beauty again or curves. <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh, do persevere because curves can be really, really useful. Okay. It is just about, about a bit of practice. Um, I know Kate uh, Varello, who's on there, and Carrie, if you're watching today, you both did the sunshine cushion with us. Um, and neither of them had done curves before and they both did really really well Marilyn as well Marilyn I think did it too Marilyn Thomas um, it's about going slow and steady and crossing those hands um, and just practice on some scraps maybe just cut some squares out of some scraps um, I mean the uh, the traditional way does work with all the pins and everything but you know me and pinning Oof, can't be bothered with it this is really nice and quick <laughs> Uh, Carol says her fabric's just arrived. Ah, lovely, lovely, fabulous. There we go, so that's that one. I'm just going to do the others and we're going to square them up, okay? So we can put the block together. Uh, okay, there you go. Kate says she loves this method. She did on her sunflower cushion. Yeah. When yeah. she was a real newbie at that time. You were, weren't you? You were, you'd not done much sewing at all at that point. And uh, you did a lovely job, really nice job. So just remember a couple of little stitches to anchor and then cross your hands, okay? And I do, like I said, I tend to use my middle finger, tuck my index finger out of the way, use my middle finger and take it sort of three or four stitches at a time and then readjust, make sure it's all as it should be. Uh, Jenny says she, uh, you did a class with us in JQ a while ago. Yes, yes we did, yeah. Um, the curve it up, I mean this isn't my method in any way, shape or form. I learned this method um, when we did the Curve It Up quilts, the Curve It Up sampler quilts, um, and it was, it's that, you know, they they suggested you do this, and it worked up re worked really, really well. I do like the Curve It Up stuff, actually. Um, if you Google, again, Google Curve It Up quilts, there's loads and loads up there, and they've got these amazing rulers which make all sorts of patterns, um, and curves really easily <laughs> really really easily um kath lum if you're there and sandra hatton you both i know you both did that quilt um who else did it dawn dawn did it as well i believe and uh they were beautiful really unusual blocks really nice and different because we do get scared of curves we do get scared of them this is quite nice as well if you're doing like improv -y stuff you know um you know, where you don't, it doesn't matter too much if nothing quite matches, you know, and you're doing some real improv curves and stuff. Um, it's definitely worth having a little play around with this method as well. There we go. Nearly there, ladies. That's this is the fourth, fourth one, the last one. But you can see, you know, normally I'm, you know, I'm a fast sewer, I whiz along stuff. I do take this just a weeny bit slower and make sure it's all it's really up against and I would absolutely use a quarter inch foot with a guide on it don't use your normal foot and move your needle over that having that guide there to butt the fabrics up against is a godsend with with this method I asked how she missed the cutting instructions for the quilt this weekend no it, they're going out this afternoon lovely I will be sending that's so my next job when I get back is to send them all out okay so um yeah don't panic I haven't sent them yet <laughs> I just it's been one of the week, those weeks. I, I meant to do them yesterday and I forgot. So, just actually managed to pucker that one just a tiny bit, but I can press it out, so it's fine. There we go. Okay. And he asks if she's down for this weekend's quilt too. You are, I believe so, yes. Yes, yes. So yeah, the cutting instructions will, will be going out um, this afternoon. And then the, 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 um, the, the mooting? The Zoom meeting <laughs> um, will go out Friday with the full pattern, okay, Friday evening. So I'm going to uh, square these up again, okay, and I find it easiest to square them up again. So if it's coming, looking at, at you guys to have this in the in the top right hand corner, it's so much easier to, to see what you're trying to hit, okay. So again, I'm looking for that three and a half and a quarter, three and a half and a quarter, move it around until they both 
hit and there and there. Okay, they're now both hitting. And I can trim up there and there. And then turn it. And I can do my three and a half by three and a half. Like, there's it. However, if you are doing the quilt with me on Saturday, there aren't actually any curves in it, so don't panic. <laughs> I know it's called Curls and Swirls, but it's an illusion quilt. There are no, uh, there are no, um, what's the word, uh, actual curved piecing in it. Okay, can you see like this one, this one stretched a weeny bit when I was ironing. It's gone out a little bit out of shape. So if I'd have gone with the small, if I'd gone with a four inch, I wouldn't have had enough in that. Okay, so that's why you want to go, go bigger and cut down. Okay, and then three and a half by three and a half that way, there and there. And he says hooray. Okay. To and no then, curves. <laughs> to no curves. And then again, you see that one looks like it's a really odd shape, but it will it will square up. So there's my three and a quarter. Move that until I get my three and a quarter there. A three and a half, sorry, across the quarter. There we go. You know, so don't worry if they come out looking a bit odd because when you've squared them up they'll they'll be fine they'll be absolutely fine go. so you have squaring up and it looks really really strange but there we go all done so we can now put the block together so don't be scared of curves ladies have a little go have a play just cut yourself some scraps and you know and play around with it okay so this one's going to sit in the center and then we're going to have one of these going that way like the the small framing fabric facing inwards on each side and there like that and then these ones are going to go in like that okay so again they're going to that bit's going to point in towards the middle all right like that okay and that would then make your shoe fly block. I'm going to sew just one of, one of these together so you can see about the um, the seam allowance and everything. But just while we're here, what would happen if we did this? Let's see what that looks like. Just just for the hell of it, you know. You've then got something different again. Swap things around. See what happens. Okay, got something there. Got more. It's creating like a sort of a lovely oval shape now, isn't it? Like that. You know, you get you get more of a, a frame like that. So play around with it. You know, it doesn't have to go in exactly as you know as I put it. You know. Oh, I quite like that way actually. That's interesting. With those those blocks the other way round, it's quite nice as well. So play around. Okay, once you've got all those elements, you don't have to make your block as I have. Okay. But we're going to sew it together just as that, like I said, the traditional sort of shoe fly block. You'd sew that row together, that row together, and this row together. And I'm just going to sew, sew, just going to sew this one together just so that you can see how the seams come together. So we're going to go right sides like that and stitch down quarter of an inch. Okay. <coughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but with your quarter of an inch, you're, you should really be hitting this little piece of uh, stitching here. When you come down, you're going to be hitting that as near as damn it, okay? Because that should be a quarter of an inch away because of how you squared it up, all right? So, like that. Any questions, any comments there, guys? Uh, Karen's just joined us, so she will catch up. Hi, Karen. Uh, and Susan says it looks really good. Yeah, you, it's definitely a block to play around with and, and not be scared of curves, okay? But just make it out of some scraps, you know? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. Um, but just, ha I think it's it's a little bit of practice with curves and just go and go for it and know that squaring up will solve a multitude of sins. <laughs> um, oh, it's Wednesday as well, isn't it? So in B tonight. Anybody, anybody remember what the theme was? I can't remember what the theme was, to be honest. Carol says she's loving the spark. Ah, cool. Thank you. I just, I like the idea that, you know, you can take a traditional block and play around with it and change elements and see what happens. 
okay so there you go you can see now that that comes to a really nice skinny can you see there comes to a really nice skinny point which is what you want okay to get that lovely lovely curve in there so these ones together and do exactly the same on that one and then i would sew the the whole thing together which i'm not going to do now because i'm aware of the time but you can see that that then becomes your block okay so i've got one there in the the red with the red frame and then that one there i just did with the navy because again i'm using up scraps at the moment okay so you've got that kind of that kind of look which is just a bit different it's a bit different to, to the traditional block you know there's nothing stop you don't have to do that centerpiece if you've got something that's got a really large pattern or a really large print on it just cut yourself a six and a half inch square you know and really showcase that fabric and then this acts like a little little picture oh like a picture frame print onto some fabric you know if you were printing onto some fab you know you can put your Sarah did a whole one o'clock on printing onto fabric you know, print off some fabric cut your cut your block out and then frame it you know this could be um quarter square triangles or something again as long as it ends up at six and a half inches that center piece the rest of it all fit in you know make it scrappy do a do a little crumb crumb piece like we did the other day you know with all those favorite tiny little pieces of fabric do a crumb crumb quilting piece make it six and a half and then frame it you know so you can you can play around with it you can play around with it and uh, have a little go so um, you could make the corners a different color you know than the, that frame you know so lo lots of ideas there for you to to play with any questions or comments there josh no i think everybody was saying it was summer dresses and summer clothes for mm. sewing bee yes yes i remember now seeing the little trailery bit every nice is saying they love the block that's what i'll be doing later <laughs> watching that um cool so i will be back on monday saturday for those of you who are on the class with me on saturday um but if not i'll be back on monday sarah's here tomorrow with some fabric weaving and she's been playing around with uh with these this fabric weaving and it's very cool it's very very cool i'm really liking it so um so yeah it's um gives some amazing effects which uh yeah <laughs> we did get lots of whatsapp messages yesterday where she was like she was unweaving and then having to reweave and stuff but yeah she's she's created some really lovely things so she'll be back tomorrow at one for that and uh you guys have a lovely lovely weekend i won't be back monday because i'm off next week i've just remembered so you've got sarah all next week and then you've got me the whole of the week after so yeah i won't see you now for like oh 10 days or so um so yeah have a lovely weekend also i'm i'm off next week i forgot about that i didn't forget but you know you the the thing you like suddenly that's come up really really quickly so yeah no i'm off so i won't see you monday at all um so happy happy sewing over the next few days and i will see you really soon take care guys bye